few more days, 10 more days till we can get the haircuts. Bear with me for a bit longer. Today, we're going to discuss security in Microsoft 365 and how your small business, or whether you're a small business, a medium business, or a big business, needs to actually start securing it and making sure that you're using all the security and defenses that are available to you. Microsoft 365 has many different features. It's got Exchange Online, it's got SharePoint, it's got Microsoft Teams, it's got Dynamics, it's got, I can't even think of them off the top of my head now. But before you start using them, and before you start really making the most of your Microsoft 365 environment, and maybe we'll do a video about that next time, you really need to make sure it's secure. Do you know what's going on in your environment? Are you using all the security capabilities? Many, many different businesses that I go into to do some sort of consulting or some sort of work inside their environment, we find that there is many, many security features that they either have just left as default or don't have configured or sometimes even disabled because it's an inconvenience. And look, security can be inconvenient, but Microsoft 365 really helps you find ways to make sure it is as convenient as it can be in your environment firstly and also being able to enable it in a very easy type of way and being able to manage it for your users. So today let's get into some tips on how you can check your Microsoft 365 environment or what you should check and what you should do about it if you find that there is a problem. Multi-factor authentication. All right. I have spoken about this many, many times and I feel like I am really sounding like a broken record, but it is very, very important and it is very underutilized in all the organizations we go into. That's one of the first things we look at and very rarely will we find an organization that has implemented it properly, thoroughly and securely and as convenient as possible. Microsoft 365 gives us lots of opportunities to sort of go in and make it convenient for our users and really encourage our users to sign up for multi-factor authentication, but we don't always see organizations actually putting this into practice. So my first tip is enabling multi-factor authentication. So Microsoft recently announced, or actually it was probably around a year ago, that users who enable multi-factor authentication on their accounts are 99.9% .9 less likely to have a compromised account. That is a huge statistic, huge statistic. And everybody should know that statistic and that should be one of the main reasons that you go in and you turn on MFA. That is a very easy way to secure your user accounts and the users within your environment with a massive result. So if you haven't turned on MFA just yet, you really should consider it. And by consider it, I mean you should do it. You should absolutely turn on MFA for all your users with no exceptions. Microsoft 365 gives you a couple of options. If you're not licensed for conditional access, then you can turn it on using the Microsoft Legacy Portal, I think it is. But there's two ways to turn on MFA. Conditional access is a bit more premium because it allows you to do things like conditional multi-factor authentication. So if the user is actually in the office, if they're on premises, don't MFA the user. If the user is coming from a compliant device, a, a device that's marked compliant from Microsoft Endpoint Manager, then don't send them a request. If you don't have conditional access, you can still turn it on in Microsoft 365 and you just have to enable it on the user and it will actually prompt them to set up their MFA on the next login. Just a note, if you do want to enable MFA, make sure that the user's account is not compromised before you enforce MFA because the last thing you want to do is turn it on and let the attacker or the hacker into that account and set up their phone or their whatever they're going to use for MFA against that account. So keep that in mind before you enable it. Make sure all your accounts are not compromised first. And if you need help doing that, you can either drop a comment in the section below or you can send me an email or you can just do a Google. Sharing. Sharing in Microsoft 365 is awesome. You can share documents with people outside of your organization. You can share documents with people inside of your organization. You can share files. You can share streams. You can share SharePoint locations. You can share a lot in Microsoft 365 and it's great for collaboration and Microsoft Teams brings that all into one sort of platform where you can do this and that with all your different users and different partners and different affiliates. The bad thing about sharing is that it's quite permissive. So from default, just off the top of my head, I know that if you share something with someone outside of your organization, by default, that user can reshare it as well. So there is lots of settings in Microsoft 365 and SharePoint and OneDrive and Teams that allow us to restrict the sharing. 
with my customers who are of a decent size and actually even the small customers those customers we always try and enforce a policy where sharing can only happen between your internal organization and also the organizations or domain names outside of your organization that you allow so for example if i have a company uh, i don't know contoso.com or something like that and i live inside that tenant the contoso.com tenant and i want to share with Fabricarm, then I just want to be able to restrict my users to only be able to share to Fabricam or multiple other domains. But I don't want them to be able to share to everyone, like especially free accounts, sharing to a Gmail account or a Yahoo account or something like that. That's probably not the most secure thing for an organization who is security conscious. So keep that in mind with sharing. There is many different ways you can restrict sharing there. I can't get into them too much in this video, but if you do want more information, again, drop a comment in the section below. Maybe we'll do a video on that, but I think that you should really start considering how your users are sharing their data and whether they are all being as careful as they can, really. And I do believe that there is some ways in Microsoft that you can check what's being shared and how it's being shared and where it's being shared to. So maybe I'll do another video on that too. Separate your accounts. Okay, so this is very important for small businesses a business who has three maybe four employees maybe even two or one employee they tend to create their microsoft 365 subscription set everything up and then they create it using a certain account so maybe i don't know joe blow or something like that joe blow at contoso.com he has his own account and that's what he signs up with to microsoft 365 and that by default becomes his global administrator account and that account holds all the power within the tenant. So that account can create, can delete, can modify. It can actually change everything about that tenant. That user is then using that account every day. So Joe Blow is using his account every single day to check his emails, to check his OneDrive, to do all those sorts of things. But what I would suggest is that you separate that account. So joe.blowercontoso.com, he has his account that he uses every day, uses in emails, uses in OneDrive users to send emails to his partners outside of the organizations and share data and then you have a separate global administrator account so maybe you can have i don't know ga hyphen joe blow at contoso.com that way if one account gets compromised you haven't lost your account that you're sharing data from and your account that is a, a tenant owner because that is where we have problems when someone gets compromised and that account has a lot of privilege that's where you're automatically going to have lots of remediation work and you're going to have to do a lot of tracing and investigation to see what's gone missing so separate your accounts it's very simple have a really long password really complex password for your global administrator account put multi-factor authentication on it obviously do the same with your other account but the main thing is segregation you don't actually pay for that global administrator account you only pay for the account that's licensed this one drives me mad and anyone who has been in IT for a while is going to completely understand. Stop sharing user accounts. Generic accounts are not okay. I understand organizations are trying to save money in some scenarios and trying to keep things convenient for the users in other scenarios. It just has to stop. It stops us from doing multi-factor authentication on shared accounts. It stops us from having accountability for who's using the account at what time and what they've done. So I'll give you an example. Three users use one single account. One of the users went into the mailbox and deleted a whole bunch of sent items. Maybe they were trying to cover up something, maybe it was an accident. We don't know who did it. All we know is the name of that mailbox and the person who has logged in, maybe they have an IP address that's similar or different to the other users, but it's not accountable you can't you can't there's no foolproof evidence about who did that that's very important especially when you're sharing sensitive files maybe via SharePoint or via email if you're still doing that stop sharing accounts we also cannot multi-factor authentication the user because how can what how can one mobile phone be owned by three users unless it's a shared mobile phone and again you shouldn't be doing that anyway so please if you are sharing accounts, if you are using generic accounts, rethink what you're doing. Is it really worth the risk of having an account compromised and having to chase your tail and do all the investigation and report your findings and report what's been lost to all the relevant bodies? 
or can you just pay an extra, I don't know, 10 bucks a month so that that user can have their own account and that user can be accountable and that user can have multi-factor authentication. It's really not worth the risk in my opinion. And if you have any questions about it, I will answer these for absolutely no cost via LinkedIn or in the comment section below. If you really want to know how you can stop using generic accounts for a certain scenario, I will help you, no problem. Just please stop doing it. I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys sort of get an idea of some of the security options that are in Microsoft 365. There is a lot of security details in Microsoft 365. There's a lot of options you can go through and you can remediate and you can sort of rethink. I've gone through some of the ones that I see a lot that can be addressed whether you're a small business, medium business, big business. But if you have any questions, drop a comment in the section below. Hit me up on LinkedIn, send me an email. I'm happy to help wherever I can. Please rethink your strategies with security. Microsoft 365 can be quite permissive by default, so please have a look into it. Don't just look into the three things that I spoke about. Look into everything if you can. And if you need more help, let me know. Maybe we'll make another video. If you did enjoy the video, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, share it with your friends and your other business owners. And more importantly, see you next time.